Are you ready to start setting up Blender to be laser focused for modeling for 3D printing? Now, if you've been following along with my beginners for Blender series, I may be using some techniques in this video that we haven't covered, but that's okay. I'm going to walk you through every step. So to begin with, press N on the, your keyboard and open up the toolbar on the side and notice how everything is set up in meters. So this default cube that we have here is two meters tall by two meters wide by two meters long. And that is probably not how big you think it is when you think about 3D printing. Chances are you want this to be closer to 20 millimeters, maybe. And so we've got to fix the scale so that it makes more sense. And so that when we export a file, it will go to our 3D printer at a size that we expect it to be. So let's start by setting up the unit scale. In the properties panel on the right, there is a tab that says scene properties under the scene properties. There's a tab called units. Open up that tab. We want the metric system, but we want our length to be in millimeters. So click length meters, change it to millimeters. Well, now our cube is 2000 millimeters, but that's not what we want either. We want this to be a little bit smaller. So change our unit scale to point zero zero one and now this cube is a two millimeter by two millimeter cube which is it, it will export exactly the way that we expect it but from now on we're going to have to pay attention to our units so that we don't export things too small like we did with the snowman now you might have noticed that something changed in the view our grid is gone and you've got to zoom way out you got to zoom far enough out that the view stops working. So how do we fix that? Well, up on the top of 3D view, there is a uh, tab here for overlays. It kind of looks like two circles on top of each other. If you click that, we can change the grid scale to 0 0.001 and press enter and we get our grid back and everything's good on this front. However, if we go to the view tab in the panel in the 3d view the right hand panel there is a view focal length clip start and end the it stops our view at 1000 millimeters so basically we won't see anything past about 10 centimeters and that's that's probably not as good let's add a zero to that and make it 10 thousand millimeters or about a hundred centimeters and that means that we can design things that are as big as the biggest 3d printer and still be able to see it from top to bottom it also means that if we import something that we scan that's big that it will still be visible so there we've got that fixed all right so now that we've got that taken care of this default scene uh, it just doesn't work for me. Here's the way that I set up my default scene. This is entirely optional, but you might want to follow along with this. First of all, select that light source and get rid of it. Select the camera and get rid of it. Select the cube and don't get rid of it. Instead, what I want you to do is move it so that this cube kind of becomes a flat floor for us. And here's how I do this. I type G Z negative one on my keyboard and that moves everything down one millimeter so that now the cube is lined up perfectly with that XY plane. Then I go up to the object menu into 3D view, set origin, I have to do it twice, to 3D cursor. And if your 3D cursor isn't in the middle, before we do this, just hit shift C to make sure that 3D cursor is centered. And then object set origin 3D cursor. And you notice that the little yellow dot has jumped up to the top. Watch how this is useful. First thing I want to do is go back to the right hand tab and select the item tab in it, the right hand panel and select the item tab in it and change the dimensions of this cube to being 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters by oh about 20 millimeters and then zoom out so that you can see it. And here we've got a floor that is, well, Let's be honest, this is smaller than your build plate probably is on your 3D printer. If you're, if you're a 3D printer, if most of the time you're designing for like an Ender 3, you can set this to 200 by 200, and this will give you an idea of your build plate. 
That way you just have something to kind of like anchor your mind to. And by making a little bit thick, then remember how we cut off the bottom of the snowman? Well, now we've got an object to do that with. And we want to rename this cube to floor. And in fact, what I usually do is I rename this first collection that's called collection to helper objects. And then I set my, uh, so in the outliner view, I renamed that collection collection to helper objects. And then I set the scene collection as the active collection by clicking on it. So all new objects show up on the outside. Now this floor is, well, it's going to get in the way of being able to see things. So here's how we make it. So it's transparent in the properties panel on the right hand side, under object properties, the icon that looks like a orange square with squares with the corners highlighted, scroll down and you'll see a section called viewport display. And if you open that up, scroll down again, display as with this object selected with our floor selected, display it as, and let's just ex display it as bounds because it's a cube. It's bounds are it's wireframe. Now, I actually use this viewport display a lot. So what I do is I grab the six buttons on the side of the viewport display section and drag it up to the top of the object properties. In fact, I don't use the transform section here. So I collapse it down because I've got transform over here in the right panel, but I will actually use this viewport display a lot. So I put it on the top. So that's pretty useful. What else? Okay. Really quickly, I'm going to create an object that will illustrate what we're talking about and then we'll delete it. So just add a cube into the scene and let's take this cube and scale it up so that we can see it. Doesn't matter how big it is exactly. Then on your keyboard, press tab to go into edit mode, press three to go into face select mode. We'll cover this all in a later video, but select the top face and delete it and then delete hit. X to delete and choose faces. There we go. Now we're seeing into the box. This box will not 3d print like this. It's not solid. It's bad. And so wouldn't it be great if blender just told us that there was something wrong? Well, there's a way we can do this. Hit tab to exit edit mode and up in that, you remember that overlays panel, click that again, the one that looks like two circles or the overlays options and click the one that says face orientation. Notice now all the good faces are blue, but if you ever see a red face, that's bad. However, I don't really like that blue. So we're going to fix that in the edit menu at the top of the, of blender, go to preferences, preferences, say it properly, Joe. <laughs> then we go under viewport. Uh, is it viewport? themes, sorry, not viewport themes and other themes scroll down to actually you don't have to scroll down. It's right there. 3d viewport and then scroll down and we are looking for uh, face orientation front and back. Now back is fine, but the front, we don't want all of our front faces to be blue. So click that and change the alpha value to zero. And when you do that, notice how Everything looks fine except for back facing faces are now red. Now this will sometimes cause a problem when two objects are overlapping and one of them is transparent like the floor. So if you ever see red on the bottom, don't panic. That's not bad. All right. A couple of, couple of little things that I want to change now. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead and delete this cube. So clear it out. I'm going to add Suzanne back in here. So add a mesh monkey and scale her up so that we can see her. Hey, Suzanne, it's good to have you back. I just want to do this so that you guys can see what's happening. We'll delete Suzanne when we're done, but in the view type, so where we have wireframe and, and solid view, and we can change those in the upper right hand corner, click the shading options, drop down on that. And we're going to turn on a couple of these. First of all, we're going to turn on uh, shadow. And shadow means that now in our scene, we are casting shadows on objects and this can help us see when things are, are, uh, dimensional, even from the top or bottom view. And then under that same menu, turn on cavity. And I like to turn Valley all the way up, but turn it off and on and notice what happened to Suzanne. Our edges are kind of being 
highlighted just a little bit so that they're easier to see. We can see what's up and what's down. We can see our corners very well. This this just this is just for editing, but I absolutely love the aesthetic of it and I love the information that it gives me at a glance. Now the last thing that I like to do with my view settings, open those back up, is I like to change the color to be random. That way if I add in another object into the scene and then scale that up so that we can see it and then add another object into the scene, scale that up so that we can see it. Notice everything gets a different color. Now functionally, is that useful? Yeah, kind of, but mostly it just looks good. I kind of enjoy just having something more interesting to look at. One more quick thing in the edit preferences menu, going back there, if you go down to key map, this you might recognize as some of the options that were on that very first menu that popped up that I said, don't worry about, just click next. Well, if you ever want to worry about them or change them, here they are. But there's a new setting down here that I really love. It's called extra shading pie menu items. Remember how we could switch to wireframe mode by pressing Z? Right, let me click over here and press C and notice it comes up solid rendered wireframe material preview and we can go to wireframe or go to solid from here. Click this option now, save and close out the preferences, then hit Z again and now we have new options. The solid and wireframe are still where they are, but at top and bottom we have toggle overlays and toggle x-ray. Now toggle overlays, I'll talk about that in a later video, but toggle x-ray, you remember the x-ray, that button right there? Well, we don't need the button over there, we can just pop it up anywhere we are, or we can go to wireframe mode, or we can go back to solid mode. It's so cool, and I love those options, but there you go. All right, all right, let's go ahead and clear the scene of everything but the floor. Don't delete the floor there, we want to leave it there, but that's fantastic. This is a perfect scene to start out with every time that we want to start a new project for 3D printing. So let's make it so that every time we start Blender, we see this instead of the cube. That's super easy to do. Go to File, go to Default, and choose Save Startup File, and then click again to confirm that you do want to change that startup file to this setup, and we are all ready to go. And that's everything that you need to get Blender set up for 3D printing. So I want to thank you very much for watching. And now let's go make something cool. I want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You make these videos possible. You are the wind beneath my wings. Thank you very much. And until I see you next time, remember you're a child of God and you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And you know, if you can take care of other people as well, because we all need each other. Thank you very much for watching.